Hey everybody, welcome to Brick Vault. Today we have two original LEGO Star Wars mocks to show you guys. This is the First Order TIE Fighter along with the First Order Special Forces TIE Fighter designed by the extremely talented builder Jarek. The TIEs served the Empire well during the original trilogy, so it is no surprise that the First Order carried the design over. And I personally like the new color inversion that we get for the bodies of these ships. We do sell the instructions for these sets at our web store, brickvault.toys, linked in the the description below and it comes with PDF step-by-step -step instructions as well as a parts list for easy ordering from Bricklink. And yes, before anybody asks if you buy one of the sets, you do get a discount on the other one. The designs for these are pretty similar. Like so many of the other Star Wars mocks that we've got in the studio, these are built to perfect minifig scale. That means all the other ships that you see in the screen flashing by match up in perfect size to one another, which is often not the case with regular LEGO sets. Personally, I love comparing smaller fighters with some of the larger ships that we've got in the studio. So the Ultimate Collector Series Millennium Falcon scales just right with these First Order TIE Fighters. I don't believe we'd ever get a scene in universe where the ghost would intersect with the First Order, but if they did, I guess this is how it might look. And of course, you have to see what the TIE Fighters scale to when you see it next to an at, -AT. Now, it's always a lot of fun for me comparing different mocks in the studio, but I think the most important comparison for these First Order TIE Fighters is showing them off next to the original TIE Fighter. This also came from the same designer, Jarek. You can definitely see that this hyper-accurate model has a lot of similarities to the First Order ones, but believe it or not, there actually are a decent amount of differences. The shape and length of the arms have both changed for the First Order TIE Fighter as well as the Special Forces one. And the main cockpits for both of these models went under significant internal changes in order to mirror the somewhat minor looking external differences that we have on these new models. Let's start by taking a closer look at the Special Forces TIE Fighter. This will be easier to sort of compare because we got a pretty recent set showing off the Special Forces TIE Fighter from LEGO, and you can see the differences are pretty apparent and very striking. There's the obvious size difference, and then sort of the signature design move from Jarek is always to have the wings built without any studs showing, and there's a great technique to make the sort of eye shape of the cockpit much more round. Now, some of the signature aspects of this build that really make the Special Forces TIE Fighter the Special Forces one is of course the red accent colors. It's a pretty subtle paint job on the fighter itself and you can see that the red wraps around just the side of the front and all the way to the back. From this angle here you can also see something with the arms coming out from the sides. There are gaps on either side top and bottom and I really love that Jerk decided to include these openings. You can see what I'm talking about from this screen grab right here. They're subtle, but certainly a distinct change between the old version of the fighter and the new. And you can also find these little gaps on the regular version of the First Order TIE Fighter as well. Now the Special Forces TIE Fighter also has, uh, I think just faster boosters. They just fly faster. You can see the larger engines sticking out the back. And interestingly enough, larger engines also need a larger power source. And that comes in the form of these pre-charged deuterium power cells that wrap around both arms in these sort of little cylindrical chunks. Now the last major detail that really separates the Special Forces TIE Fighter from the rest of the TIE Fighters is the fact that it's got a two-man cockpit with the second operator facing behind. Now due to the compact design of the build, just like the last TIE Fighters, you don't fit the minifigs in through the top, but instead you can get them in either from the front or the back. It's a pretty snug fit, not gonna lie, but they do have enough space to make it inside the fighter itself. Now the Special Forces TIE Fighter is an awesome vehicle. I love that the First Order actually has a ship that can really go toe-to-toe -to -toe with an X-Wing, but when you look at most of the battles from The Force Awakens or The Last Jedi, most of the fighters you see on screen are the regular First Order TIE Fighters, and like I said before, no, they're not quite just a color inversion from the regular TIE Fighter that we've seen before. You can see the gaps built into the arms just like the last one, but really the major difference that we have with this fighter compared to the original is the fact that the twin ion engines have been essentially twisted 90 degrees in the back so now they are vertical along the sphere instead of horizontal like the traditional design. Now, on the whole, it doesn't really look like the fighter has changed a lot because of this, but due to how this layered shape of the ship is created, a ton of the internal structure really had to be switched around in order to make it as accurate as possible to the original design. Now, between these two fighters, there are some other minor differences, like perhaps the build for the guns or the antennas, but I've hit most of the major design details that I wanted to. Now, usually when I see a 
Lego mock that looks this good, I automatically assume that it's probably really fragile. That is not the case for these models at all. In fact, I consider them very swooshable with the slight asterisk saying that, of course, the antennas and maybe the little guns might be somewhat delicate. But you can see, by the way, I'm handling this model. I'm not really trying to be delicate with it at all. You can see the wings aren't going to be breaking off too easily anytime soon. You can move the whole body around by just grabbing one of them. And I don't know what you call this next, I guess a gravity stress test, but you can even put the entire weight balancing onto just one corner of the wings. So needless to say, the body of this mock is absolutely solid. As the years have gone by, we've definitely been focusing on Lego builds that both look amazing and are also not a complete pain to move from one place to another, either in your studio or in your house. So I really feel like the designer Jarek has put together some fighters that look absolutely amazing. The rounded cockpits and studless build for the wings are truly something unique while at the same time, the internal structure for the bodies really do remain very sturdy. These latest members of the family of TIE Fighters Jarek has been designing earn their place, I believe, amongst some of the greatest LEGO Star Wars mocks out there. And once again, you can find the instructions for these models at our web store, brickvault.toys. Links in the description below. So feel free to check us out. It really helps support the channel. Now that is it for this episode, everybody. Thanks a lot for watching. Remember, if you enjoy our content, you can always like or subscribe, and we'll see you next time at Brick Vault.